All right, welcome everybody. This is our first video uh, meeting for County Center Rotary. So, uh, as usual, I have uh, again screwed up without the welcome. So, it's just like you're there at uh, the lamplighter. So, welcome again. Uh, even though there's this coronavirus that I am sure was a plot to bring down my presidency, I am still your president and this is County Center Rotary, so thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll start off with an invocation, and I have something here. So, uh, the paths of our lives are filled with peaks and valleys. When we are on top of our peaks, we become so self-satisfied that we tend to ignore the things of importance. When we, are in the, when we are in a valley, we feel a sense of abandon and again, focus only on what is directly ahead. Remind us, as you do in nature, that above the tree line, the mountain tops are barren and only in the valleys can we find the opportunity for true growth. Amen. 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 All right. So, Pledge salute. So if everyone help me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, you may sit. Uh, obviously, we don't have any uh, guests or visiting Rotarians. How about me? I'm a oh, we have Robert, the shadow uh, <laughs> Rotarian. Uh, no blue marble today. And no happy dollars. However, uh, we're going to be trying to do this on a, a weekly basis, so every Friday. If you want to submit a happy dollar, you can Venmo me that dollar and tell me a, a brief uh, description of why you're happy. And you can send well, wait, something wait. too. I might have some happy dollars. We here. have Marty Zeeb here who has a, a happy dollar. Here's five happy dollars. I just got back from Sun Valley, and I don't think I got sick in the airport. Yay, there's something to be happy about. All right. Was the surf up? Uh, <laughs> the snow was up, but they shut the whole place down before we were ready to leave. So. All right. Oh, well, I'm going backwards now. Yes, Hang on. Are. Look at this. All right. Traveling Rotarian. So uh, I've asked um, my mother to come today as probably uh, the only person that's been more places than the coronavirus. Uh, that she could come and explain one of her trips, one of her many trips. And so each week I've asked her to come and give us a, a quick minute or two on one of her many journeys. So, Mommy Dearest. You want me up there? Yes, please. In true fashion, I couldn't come up with just one but it is basically one location. Is that mine? I'll tell them to be quiet. We're gonna find her. <laughs> so, I am ex to hit the side thing and make it go to sleep. <laughs> make it go away. The other side, Robert. No. There you go. Well, we um, have to specify there's two sides. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely six. fond of Iceland. I know that's odd because I don't like cold weather. But Iceland is a whole other different kind of cold weather in my world. And I have been there two or three times and I'm ready to go anytime, pretty much. The first time I was there was in 2009. And I have, um, I have pictures in here that, oops, wrong book, that are in there that we've not had time to pick out to show you and perhaps we can do that later. Okay. And I brought along a couple of books that the travel company I prefer to travel with sends us after a trip. 
This is the one from July 2009. And if you can see the map it up. that starts out, we started from uh, Bergen, Norway. We went to Spitsbergen first, which is a vacation place for Norwegians. They love it because everything there is made of nothing but ice. And when you land there, you are giving, given a lecture on you are not supposed to go outside without someone with you with a large gun because the polar bears are vicious. And those who go out without a gun invariably are eaten by the polar bears. And they're not joking. And there's nothing funny about it. And of course, my eyes got very large and I was trying not to giggle. And they told me, don't giggle, because this was the spot someone was killed last month. So I didn't go out, I just stayed in and drank. And then good we, advice. Good advice. And then we, the next day we took off for Jan Mayen, which is a tiny little dot. And someone comes to visit them on Jan Mayen. It's also a Norwegian protectorate. Once every two years. I realized the sea was going to be rough when they started putting those little bags on the little railings in our little tiny boat. This was an expedition ship. We had no more than a hundred of us. I didn't register the little bags were going to be needed by me and several others. We also spent six hours trying to get on to Jan Mayen. The people that lived there had their headlights shining on the little ship. And we made several attempts, and we never were able to make it onto Jan Mayen. Greg Ogard was deeply sorry about that. He'd always wanted to go to Jan Mayen. Who doesn't? Uh, exa exactly. On my bucket list. It's on your bucket list, take it off. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Nor is it for me. And then we made it to Iceland. And we went almost all the way around Iceland. We saw all the traditional things that one sees. We saw the fjords. We saw the waterfalls, we saw the hot water coming out. Almost all of Iceland is um, heated and has electricity all because of the steam that comes out of the earth and spews forth through the ice. And I don't know how that works, but it does. They have electric cars everywhere. They have 100% literacy. Some of the best books I've ever read have been written by people from Iceland. That is, if you like gory, nasty mystery stories. And I do. <laughs> the scenery is out of this world. My last trip was in 2014. Um, just the front cover is gorgeous. The back, these are puffins. I'm particularly fond of penguins, but Puffins, and I, they eat them, and they're tasty. What else Penguins eat puffins? Uh, no, <laughs> people eat puffins. All right. So you would recommend everyone to go to Iceland? Absolutely. All right. And I, I have no idea if they have coronavirus there, so. I they have York. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you. I'm done. I appreciate it. All right. Another country, another time. <laughs> another country. So <laughs> tune in next week for another country. Another country heard from. Oh, this is a little disc of all of the, where we went. Well, see. And I didn't mention the penis museum. <coughs> One of Greg's favorites, I'm no. sure, after no. seeing his elephant pictures. Well, just the outside of the penis museum. And they've moved it from Husavik to downtown Reykjavik. Oh, These are nothing important. like having your mother talk about the penis museum. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and moving right along. Well, we have no greeters today, no cashiers, no, well, I did the invocation, I did the flag salute. And I'm filling in for Phil Bordet with his uh, announcements. You can still be a sponsor for the Rotary Auction, so contact Phil if you want to sponsor. Uh, next board meeting is uh, scheduled for April 21st, but the next Rotary meeting is not scheduled till the 28th. So uh, the board has passed that um, 
we're going to reevaluate uh, us being dark on the 21st, um, and then we'll let the rest of the club know if we're continuing on being dark for another month thereafter. So, um, uh, so board meeting 21st, not the 28th. Next uh, uh, meeting would be the 28th, if, unless the board says to go further. Birthdays. So uh, on March 17th, uh, on St. Patrick's Day, it was Paul Fry's birthday and Audrey London's birthday. And interesting enough, that was the same day Paul became a member. So he became a member on his birthday. Uh, wedding anniversary, um, Michelle Gestanian and Adrian Dealman. So happy anniversary to them on the 19th and 20th, respectively. So Adrian's is today. So happy anniversary, Adrian. Wine auction. Afreen's going to tell you all the wonderful things about the wine auction. All the wonderful things. All right. First of all, we need silent auction things to be entered on BidPal. We only have about 20 or 30 items right now. I'm going to show you what you need to do. The last time a link was sent to you was sent via text on March the 3rd. And if you click on that link, it will take you to BidPal. And when you're on BidPal, you only need to go up to the menu and you can enter your items there where it says donate auction items. So it's very simple. You can enter your information. We can pick things up from your doorstep, whatever you need us to do, but we definitely need items. We always have over 200 items for the auction and we are still doing the auction, so we need that. We're gonna be doing things a little differently this year. What we're gonna be doing is we'll be closing the auction on April 18th at 7.30. Certain items which are designated as live auction items will close at eight o'clock that night. We will be doing things on Facebook Live and we will be doing our raffles. We'll be doing everything like we always do. However, you can be comfortable at home, on your couch, in your jammies, not having to get all dressed up and wear uncomfortable shoes. So we will be selling raffle tickets. We have the $100 tickets. Nina has those. Contact her if you're interested or if you know somebody who's interested in buying those. Um, with those tickets, you have the first chance of um, picking any live auction item before anybody else can buy it. And that raffle will be, um, all tickets will have to be paid for by April 8th because we're going to be doing that auction on April 9th so that the person can actually pick an item out before the actual auction begins. We also have our regular raffle tickets, which are $20 each or six for a hundred dollars. We have jewelry, we have a thousand dollars cash, and we have a thousand dollar travel certificate for that. We will do that auction on Facebook Live on the 18th. So just remember anyone um, in our club, you can enter any of your guests in on the BidPal link as well. Any number of guests, there's no limit. Um, just make sure we have their phone number, make sure we have their um, email address so we can send them the link so they can bid on items and they can take part in everything. Um, if you want tickets for the $20 raffle tickets, Benita is going to be in charge of those, so get a hold of her. Adrian can bill you for any of the tickets that you want to purchase, but please get items in soon. All right, great. And so it is important to still put in your guests, even though we're not going to have the actual party portion. Uh, because that way then those guests will be invited to bid on the bid pal and so they can uh, submit their bids and hopefully raise a bunch of money for us so uh, we're still moving on uh, or if you want to just make a donation uh, you can also through bid pal uh, just make a, a straight cash donation too all right so no uh, Hornberg hops and hugs uh, until further notice. Uh, also, the district conference has been canceled. Uh, this is just, we received a thank you letter from uh, Porterville Breakfast Rotary, and it lists all the other uh, Rotarians and rot Rotary clubs that donated to it. So, uh, 
pretty amazing thing at the power of Rotary, of what Rotary was able to do. Our club alone in one meeting raised over $5,000 that we sent to them. Uh, they raised a, a, a lot of money for that uh, to, to remember the, the fallen um, firefighters there in Porterville. So uh, I thought it was important everyone knew, knew that and um, so we knew, knew what it is that uh, Rotary can do or know what it is. Uh, John Coffey uh, in our club, who is a doctor, uh, sent me this training video to make sure because of the coronavirus uh, as to how we're supposed to handle um, things. And so um, I wanted to share this with you. Uh, thank you, John. So remember, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. And with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Marty, who's going to uh, regale us with his surfing stories. Surfing stories. So we, we need lots of... Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. No, this, I, I, brought, I brought my coronavirus six-foot yardstick here. That's right. Don't, don't knock over the wine bottle. You know, I've got a little cough, so, so stay back. But that has nothing to do with surfing. So... Here, you can advance by, I think, pushing the space bar. The space bar. Oh, all right. Well, so I guess we'll talk about the pictures that we got loaded today. I, I oh, the space, space bar. Just the space bar. Yeah. Yeah. We all get a little space to. <laughs> so that that was a a picture from these are from the Motu Island. This is a place called restaurants. Or no, this is a place called uh, swimming pools. As you can tell, that last one looked kind of like a swimming pool, but. Uh, Anyway, we get big waves. I uh, stumbled into going to this place years ago through real estate. I was at a conference and a guy that was selling AIR forms, which was a type of form we use, was uh, talking about a surf trip. And surfers just always sort of have a natural ear for somebody else talking about it. And in a conference situation, it was a lot more interesting than anything else going on there. So we got talking about it, and uh, I got invited to the next trip. This was back in 2004, and took my wife. Um, she loved it. She was stuck on a four-acre island that she could walk around in seven minutes, and uh, was nothing for her to do. Um, I was out in the water surfing all day. So this is some of the things we got to do out there, and it's a lot of fun. I love it. And, it's a nice part. Space, <laughs> good space. So, so this is uh, more at the same uh, same locale. There's uh, nothing better than Fiji, in my opinion, as far as a place to go surfing. Though I have to say they've they've ruined it. It used to be private. You paid your big bucks to stay at the private island, and you got to surf the breaks. Well, it's now like, everybody's break. So it's, you know, sort of communism sort of came in there and there's no more private ownership of waves anymore. And so now it's a little more crowded out there. It used to be would be just our little group. Of Your people. little elitist group. Yeah, our little elitist group, you know. We've been, we've been run out. But uh, if you stay on the island, you can actually get out there early and catch waves before the, all the boats show up full of everybody else. Um, this is what happens when people you don't know or like very much surf with you, they take off in front of you. This is called dropping in. Uh. It's frowned upon. <laughs> and drinking wine and what, or beer and watching the uh, sunset is, is another pastime you can do while you're there. Do you see the green flash? You do see the green flash when, when there's no clouds on the, on the deck down there. But we, we probably saw it that night. Um, more surfing at the same spot. Uh, you'll notice a, a different surfboard there that's, uh, you know, like, like any true surfer, I have about a dozen surfboards from nine foot logs to, well, my six foot uh, yardstick here. <laughs> um, these are some of my boards, uh, some of our exchange students in the past, Mashu and Isa, Isa, Isa. Um, this was in Santa Barbara. Took them down for a little 
exchange trip down there. Um, they had a great time. You can see uh, in the background, we weren't surfing the little winds here in the front. I would actually get them out to the real waves, but uh, they had a ball. Um, this was another time, I think that was Thomas maybe, uh -huh. and uh, blanking on her name right now, but um, she, was, she was from Japan, he was from uh, Belgium, I believe, and that was at Morro Bay. This is what they look like drowning out there in the <laughs> ice cold water. Uh, I do provide them wetsuits. Uh, this is just a picture down in uh, a place called Cottons at Trestles in San Clemente area. This is another gang of, uh, uh, in fact, that's uh, Lucas. And then I believe the, the guy with him in the middle with the wood board is um, the son of, I uh, hope you can edit this. <laughs> Willie Gallegos. <laughs> Willie Gallegos' son, yes, who was a good friend of Lucas's when they were here. Okay. So <coughs> I, I took both of them out there. And, same place at, at Moor Rock. And flying the Brazilian flag. Yeah. And this is, uh, is this Lucas again? Yes. And uh, I can't remember her name, but she was another one of our yeah. exchange students at the time at a lake in Hanford. Um, we were taken out there, and this is Lucas. Uh, Getting started, that's me trying to show how you're supposed to do it. And this is, boy, I wish I could remember all their names. <laughs> but uh, took a couple more exchange students down to uh, Santa Barbara. This is actually in Ventura at C Street, California Street, Ventura. And uh, they were having a great time out there. And I was having a great time showing them off around down there. <laughs> um, this is back at uh, the Cottons. Okay. Um, anyway, those are just a, a few of the things I, I did get to surf at the um, Wave Ranch. I have some pictures of that in my rush and with this coronavirus thing going on. It's been a little hectic lately. I didn't get a chance to get you those to post on this. but. Uh, so how many times have you gone to the Surf Ranch? Uh, to surf once. Okay. I've been there four times. I've watched two contests there, um, which is very interesting. And then got to go with Mark and Carolina Perry. Um, they bought a tour through their auction at the Breakfast Rotary. And we all got to go there. And we rode on jet skis right behind the surfers out there on the wave in the lake. And uh, I had a great time. That was, that was a lot of fun, too. How old were you when you first started surfing? I was 18. When I got to UCESB, I, my first roommate was a surfer. I'd always wanted to learn to surf, and he helped me as much as people did back in the mid-70s. Here's a surfboard, there's the waves, <laughs> I'll see you later. So you sort of have to sink or swim out there. Yeah. Um, that was fun. I'd always wanted to do that. Our summer vacations were Newport Beach. As a kid, I'd go down at 6 a.m. in the gray light and watch the surfers on their longboards back in the 60s. And that always was something that caught my interest and I knew I wanted to do. Now, it's also my understanding that um, you did a study um, around the world. That, um, yeah, study. we went on a semester at sea. Semester at sea. Around the world. Okay. And took a surfboard, of course. Okay. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to all these potential great surfing spots. I got to surf Jeffreys Bay in South Africa, surfed in the Seychelles Islands, surfed in the Philippines, surfed gosh, uh, in Hawaii. We, that was one of our stops. Uh, yeah. Oh, Brazil. Yeah, we all on that. Uh, all on the same trip. Yeah, in the wow. three-month period. Nice. So, how many different countries have you surfed? Probably seven. Okay. What's your favorite, the, the one place, if you could just surf one place, 
Oh, Fiji. Uh, that's Fiji. That's, yeah, that's not even okay. a question. And that, that's the elitist place that you were showing? That was the elitist place, place. yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's been taken over by the communists. And you go there every year? Um, I used to go there every year. I went there for a period of my life every year. And then we started going every other year. And it's been three years since I've been back. So it's, it's changed a little. Um, and it's gotten a lot more expensive. You know, back in the day, $2,000 was the elitist fee. Yeah. It's like five now. So yeah. it's I that. Bet, I bet prices will be going down right now. Yeah, prices are probably <laughs> coming. I bet there's a few discounts coming. But you have to swim there. You can't fly there. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done any big wave surfing? Um, well, when I lived in the Virgin Islands, I surfed on a board smaller than that one in like 15 foot waves, wow. which was stupid. <laughs> um, I, I paid a lot of dues trying to do that, but that was the only board I had so at the time. So you, you need a longer board? You need a longer, board? yes. Okay. Need, the, the longer the board, the easier it paddles, the faster it paddles, and the bigger the wave, the faster it's coming in at you. Mm. So you need as much speed as possible to get your momentum to get down the face without getting pitched off the top, uh. pummeled, <laughs> mercilessly. <laughs> All right. So. Thank right. you very That's much. I appreciate Cal Calabunga. Yeah. You want no shaking oh, hands? Oh, no shaking oh, hands. Oh, 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 back, back, back. Six back. foot. That's right. Only. All right. Well, that's what we have for you. Um, if you have announcements that you would like us to share with the club, please send them to me or Robert, and we will post those and share those uh, in future ones. Uh, but uh, other than that, everyone stay safe, and uh, we'll see you guys. Later. You gonna pass out the Lysol wipes? Yeah. <laughs>